What's going on guys, it's Caleb, and today I'm going to show you guys um, how to do the Rock Paper Scissors project, which is um, essentially you're creating a Rock Paper Scissors game through JavaScript. Um, so let's go ahead and get started by heading over to CodeAcademy.com. Um, one of my subscribers, he reached out to me and he requested this tutorial, and I know before I went do the projects, um, I was expecting you guys to... Um, learn from what learn from the videos that I've been teaching you and try and um, complete these projects on your own but I can see how some of you guys are definitely running into problems especially with the uh, rock paper scissors because you're doing a lot of if statements you're um, comparing things with conditional statements a lot and really a much uh, more efficient way to do this would be with cases but we haven't learned cases yet, which that will be coming up later on. I think that's in um, data structures, or it might be in control um, control for control flow. I want to say that's where cases come in, and they're pretty cool. But let's go ahead and get started by heading over to let's see functions. This is the uh, project build rock paper scissors down here. So let's go ahead and uh, start this. <clears throat> And let's go ahead and paper beats rock. So if we go ahead and start this, um, let's go ahead and just reset our uh, little terminal window here. Reset editor. Um, scroll up a little bit. All right. So rock paper scissors is a classic two-player game. Each player chooses either rock, paper, or scissors. The possible outcomes: rock destroys scissors, scissors cuts paper, and paper covers rock. Our co code will break the game into three phases. A. User makes a choice. B. Computer makes a choice. C. A compare function will determine who wins. Click run when you are ready to start. So let's go ahead and click run and go on to our exercise. Once again, resetting our editor. We start by first asking the user which option you want to pick. We will later use this choice in the compare function to to determine the winner. So let's go ahead and start by declaring a variable called user choice. Make the variable equal to the answer we get asking a user do you choose rock, paper, or scissors? So to get input from a user um, we want to prompt them with a prompt message and we can go ahead and do this by saying var now I gotta be clicked in here var user choice equals prompt and then the message it wants us to say is, do you choose rock, paper, or, oh, uh, that's just S-C-I-S-O-R-S, -S, scissors. And let's just go ahead and close that. Run it. And it's going to ask us, do we choose rock, paper, or scissors? Let's just go ahead and say rock. So that was correct. Let's go ahead and go on to the computer choice, part one. And let's go ahead and just reset this. Awesome. So we we now need the computer to make a choice. The game is only going to be fun if the computer chooses randomly. Luckily, JavaScript has something that can help us with this. If we declare a variable and make it equal to math.random, that variable will equal a number between 0 and 1. Under your previous code, declare a variable called computer choice and make it equal to math.random. Print out computer choice so that you can see how math.random random works. This step isn't needed for the game, it's just useful for learning. So, <clears throat> pretty much what it wants us to do is create a new variable called computer choice. So, let's go ahead and just get this typed out. And we're creating the, uh, the math operator and we're calling the random method. And whenever we do this, like it said, it's going to um, go ahead and pick a number from 0 to 0.99, or pretty much less than 1. And what you can do from here, uh, in, in a lot of games, they use math.random to get um, random numbers. Uh, and what they'll do, they'll add them or they'll multiply them to get a number between 1 and 6 and so forth. And you'll see this later on whenever we get onto the uh, blackjack, how math.random comes in handy. But nevertheless, let's just go ahead and console.log our um let's see, console.log <laughs> our computer choice. 
And this is not necessary, but this will show you how each time it's a different random number. And let's see, we go ahead and run this. Uh, once again, we can just say rock. And as you can see, we got 0.44568 and so forth. And if we run it again, uh, once again, just put rock. We have 2.3 and so forth. So as you can see, each time that the math that random is ran or run, um, the computer choice gets a new value. So let's go ahead and delete the console.log and go on to the computer choice part two. And let's just go ahead and reset our editor. So, we have computer choice, but it now equals a random number between 0 and 1. We need to somehow translate that random number into a random choice of rock, paper, or scissors. How do we do this? Well, if the computer choice is between 0 and 0.33, make the computer choice equal to rock. If the computer choice is between 0 0.34 and 0 0.66, make the computer choice equal to paper. If the computer choice is, e or is between 0.67 and 1, make the computer choice equal to scissors. And as you can see, if you were to take, um, say, 99, and if you were to divide that by 3, you get 3, 3.33333, 3, 3, 3, 3, and so, you know, just never-ending 3s. So it's pretty much taking uh, an integer, not, not necessarily an integer, it's a, it's a double, and it's taking that double and it's cutting it up into thirds and I mean that by the point three three and that's how it's de determining whether or not if you oh the computer gets rock the computer gets paper or the computer gets scissors you know and I just explained pretty much how it gets it but there are three outcomes if else only lets us have two outcomes what now we need to use an if and then an else if and then an else see the hint for the full syntax you'll laugh at how easy it is Understanding your existing code, write out the if-else, if-else statement. In the respective code blocks, change the value of the computer choice based on the rules stated above. Remember, you do not have to use var when changing the value of the variable that already exists. And that's important because if you were to use var every time you try to change your um, variable, you'd just be creating a new variable each time, which it's it's bad because um, <clears throat> if you keep adding a new or creating a new variable, you can't add data or subtract data or even get data from the old variable. Now, if you're on a different scope compared, say, um, a public and a, a private variable, that's completely different. And in one of the videos uh, a while back, I went over and told you about the scopes. So if you're not really sure on what I'm talking about, you can go back to uh, recent videos and look through them. And one of them talks about scope somewhere in there. But pretty much what we want to do here is um, we want to create a conditional statement. And what we're going to say is if, and we're going to say computer choice. And we want to make sure that computer choice is less than and equal to that's important so it can be less than but it can also be 0.33 less than or equal to 0 0.33 and then we want to do an open curly brace and now we want to assign the computer choice to set to and we want to set it to rock so we just say computer choice equals rock and <clears throat> for some reason I put uh, quotation marks there but there we go so now that we have our computer choice set to rock, we can do an else if. So else if, and we have to do, throw in another conditional statement here. If computer choice, oops, C H O I C E, if computer choice is, um, we want to say greater than 0.33. So let's see. Or really 0.34 so if we put 0 0.34 less than equal to and computer choice is in the middle and you'll see in a second you put equal and so um, is less than 0 0.66 and essentially what this is saying that well if computer choice is less than or equal to 0.33 assign it rock 
Now we're saying, well, if it's greater than or equal to 0.34, but it's also less than 0.66, we want to sign it the paper. And we do that by doing the open curly braces. And we do computer choice, once again. And we put the equal sign, and we put paper. And <clears throat> actually, these should be in quotations. And let's go ahead and fix that. Sorry about that. Now, for the final um, conditional statement, we all we have to do is say else. So this is referring to, well, if it's not less than 33, if it's not equal to 34 or less than 66, it's obviously got to be greater than 0.66 and less than 1. So we can just say else in this case, and it would save us from writing more um, conditional statements to check whether if our computer choice is um, greater than or equal to 67 and less than 1. So we just say else computer choice. I don't know if I could type today. It's computer choice. And we assign it to um, <clears throat> scissors. Okay, so that's pretty much got our conditional statement set. Let's go ahead and try to run this. And let's just go ahead and say rock again. And so, as you can see, um, um, let's see, our computer choice, whenever it first ran, our math.random return a value somewhere that is greater than 0.66 and it's less than 1. So that's why we got scissors in our... Um, console down here.